All right, guys, welcome to this video. We have a special interview again with Ryan Pineda. How are you doing, Ryan? Good to be here. Yeah, we did a, a previous video, if you haven't seen that yet, on social media, how to grow your real estate business using social media. Uh, but today we're gonna flip back over and we're gonna kind of deep dive back into real estate. And what we're gonna talk about is transitioning into higher end. It could be for someone listening, maybe how to go from the 100 to 200 or the 300 to 500 or whatever it might be. The idea though with this topic is, how do you transition into the higher end homes where you can start to get some bigger profits per deal, right? So guys, that's what we're gonna be talking about. Stay tuned. This video is brought to you by 10K Club, a program that pays you $10,000 for finding ugly houses. Learn more at my10kcheck.com. If you're new here, I'm Jerry Norton. I went from dead broke to millionaire flipping real estate. And after doing a thousand deals, I created this channel to help you master the art of wholesaling and flipping so you can live your dream life. Be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon to get notified when new videos are released. Okay, Ryan, so this is gonna be a fun topic here. Uh, if you guys are listening and you're interested in luxury real estate or even how to do bigger deals, then I think you'll find this topic interesting. So. Ryan, I know you've got a lot of questions. We're gonna do this kind of more yeah. like shotgun fire, you know, interview style. But maybe tell me a little bit about some of your kind of higher price deals and what you're thinking of of why you might want to consider even going a little bit bigger on those. Yeah, so my background is I flipped hundreds of entry level homes, but as far as luxury goes, I mean less than a handful. Gotcha. I number one. I just, every time I've done one, it always breaks even or doesn't do this well as I thought it would do. Yeah. Um, number two, they kind of scare me, man, to be honest. Even after flipping all these homes, I still have fears of like, man. A lot of capital. There's a lot of capital, there's more risk, in my opinion. Is I, there a buyer? I, yeah, could, <laughs> and that might be a false belief of mine. Like, so, you know, I really wanted to pick your brain on how you went from that, because I know, I think most flippers always start, you know, in the yeah. lower homes. and. They keep scaling and scaling, and we're finally getting our first one that's gonna be a major home run. You know, we're selling it for 900,000. We bought it for 595, Okay. and so it's gonna be a great deal. And I'm currently building my dream home, yeah. which is my first new development project, and you know, it's gonna be luxury, and I'm running the numbers, and I'm not gonna sell it, you know, especially if my wife's watching, we're not gonna sell it. <laughs> but, you know, I, I'm going through it, and I'm like, man, these numbers are crazy if we hit what we think we're gonna hit. Mm -hmm. So where do I start? How do I do this more? Yeah, great question. So first of all, if I think the biggest thing is whatever business level you're at, you wanna be thinking about how do I grow my business? How do I not get in a comfort zone? So Ryan, uh, when I first started and for years, I've been full time now flipping 17 years. When I first started, I kind of hit this groove where I found like my bread and butter. Mm -hmm. And it was very, it was very easy tempting to kind of be like, you know what, I've kind of got this entry level flipping figured out here. We make 25 a pop. Why don't I just do this and do a bunch of them? I'm making great money. Why push the envelope? Why stretch? Why take a risk of maybe not figuring it out by changing that in any, in any way? And I'm really glad that I, I never adopted that mindset of you know status quo or stick to what just works. And so for me, it's been kind of like, let's push it a little bit. What is the next thing? What does the next price point look like? Because what I learned was the higher up in price point, if you follow a formula, then the bigger the, the spread is. And the biggest lesson is it's the same amount of time, energy, and effort. Right. I mean, I think, tell me if you agree with this, that $900,000 flip, now it might be a bigger home, might be higher finishes, might be a little more capital, but by and large, the process of buying, fixing, selling is no different than your entry level flip. Yeah, for us, not really. The only thing I would say is with our entry level flips, everything is very much the exact same on every flip, right? Same so, tile. Same everything. We have to make no decisions about anything. Yeah. But with luxury, it's it's very custom. Yes. So I would say in the design process, that's the only like addition for us. Yeah. But overall, by and large, flipping is flipping is flipping. It's about the same amount of time, energy, and effort to do a little deal as a big deal, given some variables, but for the most part, that's what I found. Yeah. And so I think the way that you kind of look at your price points that I like to do is I like to look at the three to 300 to 600,000 as kind of pushing into now a conventional buyer. Um, really the rehabs I do at three to 600 are no different than the under 300. It's just nicer neighborhoods. Us too. Same rehab though. Yep. Same finishes, same. same cabinets, same appliances. 
Now, when you start to push past 600 and you get to like the 900, a million, things start to change. Like you said, you better get the right appliance package. Yeah, they notice that stuff. All right, yeah, those things start to matter. You better make sure you got the right window package. Do you put crown molding? I mean, what kind of, how, how wide are your wood floors? Can you, is six inch or you gotta have nine? And like those things start to make a big difference and affect cost. And so it's really though a matter of, you know, really understanding that buyer and taking the time to learn that buyer, right? Like what is that buyer at the 900,000 price point? What are they expecting? What kind of finishes are they expecting? And if I put a product out there, is there going to be demand for it? Are they gonna want this thing? And can I create that product in a way to where it flies off the shelf, hopefully, right? right? And so that takes a little bit of, of just really understanding. Um, I think, Ryan, to really know it well, you have to get into the world of new construction. You have to dive into the world of new construction because the million dollar buyer is also looking at new construction. Right, that makes sense. I didn't even think of that. Yeah, when they're looking at a rehab, they're also looking at the new construction. So they know what's trendy. They know the high ceilings, the open floor plans. They know the, you know, they know what the tile looks like in the bathrooms because new construction is always pushing the trends, right? They're always trying to find what is the latest and greatest thing that somebody wants. So we design our rehabs to match new construction. Well, and the other part of that too is like, if you're a buyer, why would I buy this renovated home when I can go pick all my finishes, get a brand new house? Without a doubt. Right. New construction always gets a premium. Yeah. So if you're gonna compete with new construction, what we, what we look at it is it better be a deal. Yeah. Because if it's, if it's apples to apples, like your finishes are the same as these finishes, they'll pay 20% more for new. Right. Even though yours is the same finish. Yep. Because it's, it's not new. Yeah. It's renovated. And so there's always a premium for new construction. So when we, what we do is we say, how do I make it look like new construction, but it's a deal now? Yeah. So when that buyer goes to the new one, same square footage, same finishes, same neighborhood, and then they come to mine, they go, man, how do we say no to this one? It's a deal. Yeah. We could, it's gonna cost us 20% more and we get the same thing, right? So then they buy it. Right. Right? So if you put it at the same price, they're gonna buy the new one. Well, and I think the thing for myself uh, that you gotta be careful of as well is that like a lot of new construction doesn't show on the MLS. So you might be comping the house and then you're like, oh, all the comps are this. And then all of a sudden you're like, why is it not selling? Well, did you even look down the street? There's a new development that they're all buying in. And the reason why that is, is because uh, custom is different than specking. So I think it's really important that you understand the difference. A custom home, custom built home, means somebody bought a piece of land, hired a builder, got some plans, and that builder built them that home. Those aren't gonna show up, yeah. right? Because there's no sale price. It's a, it's a custom built home for somebody. Now, a spec home is where someone like me bought a piece of land, Got an, got, an engine, got an architect, designed a home, built it, finished it, put it up for sale, and sold it. Now that becomes a comp because it's basically the same thing we do as flipping, it's just new construction. So it, they're really easy to find. You go on and you put a filter like on Zillow and you put 2019. Minimum year built 2018, 2019, because someone's not gonna build their own home and then sell it within the year they, that it was built, right? Yeah. That's a flipper. That's a new construction flipper. And then you can look at that and see, okay, here's what new construction is doing in my neighborhood. Right. So for you, for example, let's say that you're like, Jerry, I got this $900,000 flip. I think there's a market for a $2 million product. Yeah. I wanna buy something, renovate it, or maybe even build and flip and hit the $2 million price point. What does it take to get that product out? And it's definitely gonna be what are, people, what are people buying specs? What are specs selling for at the two million price point? And can you figure that out? Can you understand that product? And that's the, that's the scary part, right? Because there's yeah. not many comps like we have for flips. When we flip, we're like almost certain. Oh yeah. Like, oh yeah, there's a bunch of comps, I'm good. But that's the scary part for me is when you're spec building, you're kind of like setting your own comp. Yeah, you definitely, it can very much be that way. So for example, I'll give you an example. Uh, uh, as of this recording, we, we just released a video. I did a walkthrough on a new flip I'm doing, and it's a 1.8 buy. 
Okay, so we bought this for 1.8. It's it's on a street called Billionaire Row. If that tells oh, you anything, I want to live there, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. Imagine the mindset, right? And this is like the this is like the doghouse of the neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is the worst house of Billionaire's yeah. Row. Okay. 1.8 million buy guys, right? Right. But happiest house in the neighborhood. Always buy the worst house in the best neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. There's there's billionaires living on this street. Now we don't have the view. The other side of the road has the views and stuff, but we're on the street, right? So 1.8 buy. Now, um, we're gonna spend, we think about 400, 450. It's a cosmetic flip, so we're just doing surfaces. That's cosmetic. Okay. Cosmetic, right? <laughs> we're just doing floors, we're just doing cabinets, we're not moving walls, we're not opening doorways. We do a lot of that, and that's, a, that's double your budget, right? Right. We're not doing headers and opening, we're not doing any of that. We're doing straight cosmetic. No change in floor plan built in the 90s. Yes. So we have a $400,000 product. I mean, it's still, we're still spending you know, $100,000 on our appliance package. Crazy. Right? Because we got to put in all the, to. you have to, right? That's the buyer. So we think our back end on this home is going to be three, five. Wow. That's, okay? that's over a million profit. Right. It's over a million profit. We'll net a million after closing, carry all of it. We'll net a million if we hit that number. Now, new construction for 6,000 feet, if I tore that house down and built new 6,000 feet, we're looking at more like a $6 million home. Right. But our house is 90s. You know what I mean? Like it's got, it's roomy. It's, it's new enough, you know? Yeah, it, but it's gonna be updated. Yeah. So now what we're hoping to do is we're hoping that someone's gonna come in and say, you know, I want the street, I want the neighborhood, I want billionaire row. I'm not a billionaire, but I wanna pretend like I am or <laughs> maybe aspire to be one, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't, I don't, I can't buy six million for new, but I can buy three, five for updated, but, but older floor plan. Yeah. You're still the cheapest in the neighborhood, but you know, you're in the neighborhood. And guys, when this thing came out, it was off market. There were like 10 offers. We literally had to pull the trigger and like, we had like 10 minutes to decide. Wave earnest money. Wait, 10 minutes to decide on a $1.8 million yeah, house. Yeah, that's wow. how freaky it was. But this is now, we've done, you know, a dozen, 15 multi-million dollar flips in this neighborhood. So I can make a decision like that because I know my market so well. Right. Now, off the camera, you and I were talking, you're like, what was it like? I mean, did you lose money on these things? And, you know, the first couple of years of, of transitioning from a million to the three million was, was brutal. It was freaky, scary, you know, didn't make money on the first couple of them, lost money on the first, didn't make money on the next two. And, and it took me 24 months to, to build and flip them, right? right? So it was this massive learning curve and pretty freaky, a lot of people would not be willing to kind of go through it. But I knew that, man, if we can just figure this out, there's a market here for it. There's a buyer for that type of product. Uh, but I kind of treated it just like everything else. You know, hey, it's, a, it's my education. It's a learning. It's like everything, right? Yeah. I mean, how many times have you made mistakes, Ryan, yeah. in all of your different they're, businesses? They're your best learning tools, yeah. you know? Yeah, so if you're willing to make mistakes and it's okay and you can stomach that, I think you can transition very, very quickly. But the thing of it is, is we still follow the same formula, right? So, or if, if, if not a better formula, meaning higher margin, yeah. the bigger, the higher up we go, the more margin we want right. because of the risk. Exactly. Yeah. So like we've got one closing here in a couple of weeks at a 4.85 million price point and we're netting one, two. Wow. One, two net, net closing fees, commissions. Yeah. You're looking construction. at construction in the 20s. That's crazy. Yeah, and that's and that's uh, including full time supervision. We got a guy on site managing the whole build project, yeah. right? Yeah. So it's actually less work than yeah, a lot of my. It. Yeah, it's way less work than my small flips. I do. Mm. I sit here and I go, why the heck am I flipping this three hundred thousand dollar house? It's it's way more work. Yeah, you know, right? <laughs> and risk. I mean, yeah, you know, that's the one thing I realized about spec building versus you know, rehabs, it's like we go into a rehab and you just never know what it could be. You know, we're thinking, oh, it's 30,000 and then boom, it's 50. Yeah. And then that's- Cause you got tear into a wall. Or that's you your got, profit yeah. right there. Yeah. And then, you know, with spec and everything, to me anyways, from the outside looking in, it's like, it's very fixed on what it's gonna be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we bid out everything way ahead of time. Yeah. It's all new. So there's no, we're not trying to save a toilet seat. Yeah, exactly. Like I'm not going to go into a wall that doesn't exist and like, oh man, like I didn't expect that. <laughs> My little flips, it's like save that toilet seat, right? Yeah, because <laughs> you exactly. have to. You have to. Yeah, because you're, you're on a budget. You know, we're, we're like, 
hey, you know, there's that guy, we're, we're, hiring, we're hiring a homeless guy to paint our house because he'd given us a deal, right? <laughs> like, I hate rehabbing like that, but you have to yep. to make money at the lower levels. It does. It's just brutal. Yep. So it's nice and it's fun. And like, we love being like, okay, yeah, we're spending 50 grand on our refrigerator. You know how fun that is to buy a $50,000 refrigerator? You don't do it often. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's kind of fun to rehab at the luxury level anyway and kind of be looking at that type of finishes. It's just, ch just changes kind of the whole game, but it's fun. Well guys, that's it. So if you really want to start to learn that, you know, it's, it's just like anything, bite your teeth in on it, start where you're at, transition into maybe that next level, get, your, get comfortable there. It's not something that you just do overnight, getting into luxury. I mean, it's been a transition for you to get up to that 900, yep. uh, but you can keep going. I mean, the sky's the limit, really, if you think about it, and keep those margins there. So you wanna make that profit margin and keep that, that percentage so that as it goes up, it goes from six figures to seven figures, yep. and, and it's just five million now instead of one million, but it's all the same thing. There's a buyer for it, right? right. And there's a market for it, and understand that. Uh, Honestly, there's a lot of places that don't really have a market for it. So there is that too. Like I think Vegas probably has a market for $3 million homes. Right, for sure. You know, maybe not 10 million where there's a market, meaning when I say market, meaning there's a ready and willing buyer for that house. Yeah, you we, you'll have to um, check out my YouTube channel. We sold the most expensive house in Vegas last year. I saw million. that video, I said, yeah. yeah. Though you did a walkthrough on it? Yeah. Yeah, so that was and that was a spec, right? It was a flip. No, no, oh, okay. um, it, it was newer, you know, like three years old, oh. but um, yeah, listed, yeah, my, sold. my brokerage sold it. It was cool. Yeah. A California buyer. I cannot disclose, okay. but uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Big buyer. But there's a lot of California buyers. I'll just leave it at that. Okay. A lot of buyers coming to Vegas. Yeah. And so, you know, look at your market, figure out where your high end buyer is and what the market is for that and see what it takes for you to kind of get to that place. For sure. And that's, that's the fun thing about it. So awesome. Good stuff, guys. Thank you for being here. If you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Uh, make sure you check out Ryan's channel. He's doing a lot of stuff on luxury real estate. I see a lot of your videos you're putting out about luxury real estate yeah. and other things, personal finance and, and uh, flipping related too. So uh, guys, check out Ryan's channel. It's, the, it's Ryan Pineda. And uh, if you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel. This is the number one channel on YouTube for wholesaling and flipping. We'll see you on the next video.